My name is Robert Drysdale. This is my gym. It's located on 1234 South Rainbow, Las Vegas, Nevada. I've been doing jiu-jitsu now for 11 years. Uh, I started out in a small school in E2, out of a small city outside Sao Paulo. I moved to the U.S. a few months later, started training with the J at the JSEC gym, with uh, John Lewis, De La Silva, and all those guys, and uh, got really into it, you know. Trained there for like probably two years, decided to move back to Brazil just for competition. You know, I just wanted to develop, get that experience, you know, and I wanted to bring my Jiu Jitsu to the next level. And very few competitions in the United States back then, like two or three a year. You know, in Brazil, that's a good thing about Jiu Jitsu in Brazil, you can compete every weekend if you want. 2001, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, I lived in Brazil. I was pretty much, I pretty much just trained 100% Jiu Jitsu. Training, competing, uh, teaching, that was it. I went to college, you know, studied. Did my thing, but it was Jiu-Jitsu was my priority. Um, end of 2007, actually, end of 2005, I already had plans of moving back to the United States. But you know, training over there was so good. I just, you know, and I, I really wanted to win Abu Dhabi, and I knew I had to be over there for that. And uh, so I just ended up staying in Brazil. You know, so I graduated college uh, end of 2007. I I won my Abu Dhabi. Then like, you know what, man, I'm just gonna move to the U.S. and I want to make a uh, you know, just make my move into MMA, so that's, I've been living in Vegas now for a year. Well, I, I was invited to MW 2005. Uh, I was so excited about being invited, I wasn't even thinking about winning. I was like, oh, I can't believe I made it in, you know. Because I remember when I started training, I would watch those guys compete, you know. That was back in 99, 2000. Like, wow, man, imagine being one of those guys, you know. They're fighting out without, that was a big deal, you know, for me. And, uh... I uh, I just couldn't believe I was there, you know, so I got invited in 2005, but I wasn't ready mentally, I wasn't ready physically, technically, I just wasn't there, I was, I was excited about being there, but I wasn't even thinking about winning, you know, I was just happy to be one of the top 16 grapplers in my weight class, you know, and uh, 2005, I won the Worlds with the Gi, the black belt level, and that was, you know, gave me a lot of confidence, like, oh, I can do this, man, and then uh, 2006 was also a good year. And then 2007, I got invited again for Abu Dhabi. And uh, this time, I, I came in to win. I took like four, probably four or five months before the competition, just straight out, no gi, focusing on Abu Dhabi, thinking about the Abu Dhabi rules, watching Abu Dhabi tapes, and like, I'm gonna win. This time, I'm gonna win. And uh, so 2007 came. I saw my weight class. I finished my first matches. And then I lost to Shanji at the semifinal of a 99 kilo weight class. Uh, had him in the guillotine, picked me up, slammed, he got his head out and scored those two points. I was like, man, you know, but I was so disappointed that I didn't win my weight class. I, like, I couldn't believe it. But, you know, in my head, you know what, I'm at least going to take home third place. I was really disappointed about not winning my weight class. You know, credits to Shanji, but it, it's, you know, it, it probably worked out best, you know, because I walked in the open so relaxed. So next day I walked back in to fight my, uh, uh, for third place, Faka Kareko. He's the guy that beat me in 2005, so it was a big deal about beating him in 2007. Uh, got his back and choked him pretty fast, like three or four minutes into the match. Got, jumped on his back, finished him with a rear naked choke. It was a big deal for me because... He's the guy that beat me in 2005. He's a tough competitor, and you know I'm thinking, oh, at least I'm not going home empty-handed. I trained so hard, you can't. I didn't want to go back home without even placing. You know, like I got to, I, I got to get this at least third place. You know, and then uh, I was invited to compete the open because you get, you know, you're not, you can sign up and then they'll pick out a few names to compete the open, and they they wanted me in. So I'm like, oh, okay, let's do this. You know. And it was probably a good thing that I lost my weight class because I, I got in, I, I jumped in the open so relaxed and so, you know what, I'm just gonna fight, I don't care, I'm, I'm just gonna do my best and uh, I don't feel, I didn't feel any pressure to win, you know. I wanted to win, of course, but there was, no, there was no pressure. It was more me concerned about having fun and doing what I love and I'm just gonna go out there and just fight the way I train. Just try to finish people and if I do, I do. If I don't, you know, I did my best. And uh, it was good, man. I fought Big Mac in my first match. Big Mac, people over here aren't really familiar with him, but he's tough, man. He's been beating some big names in jiu-jitsu. And uh, he's a tough competitor. He's heavyweight, hard to take down, good base on top. If he gets on top of you in half guard, I mean, you pray, bro. You're not even, I mean, you can't even, 
you can only move your eye, your eyes, put it like that. You know, it's it's hard to pummel with them. It's hard. He's a big big guy, you know. And uh, I got I got him with the triangle pretty early in the match. Got him with the triangle. Second match, I fought David Avalon. He uh, he beat Shunji in his first match. Shunji's the guy that beat me, so I was pretty excited about beating David Avalon. The guy that beat Shunji. Uh, beat him with the takedown. It was a pretty good match. It was tough. I couldn't. I, I had him in guard for the first 10 minutes. I couldn't. Fin I couldn't finish. Couldn't sweep. And then second round, you can't go to guard because you're gonna get minus points. So uh, I knew I had to take him down. He's a good wrestler, and it was tough. But I got him down at the end. Established position. Won that match. Third match, uh, I competed against my friend Andre Govon. We went at it. You know, just just like anyone else. I wanted to win, and uh, we went at it. You know, got on top of him. Passed his guard. He went to his knees, got his back and choked him. Uh, he had a tough match with Verdun before that. He beat Verdun on a decision. It was a tough match. He was probably tired. And uh, final, I fought Garcia, which is someone I'll, I've always looked up to. Garcia's got probably the most beautiful jiu-jitsu game I've ever seen. Uh, very technical. He's probably the biggest name in Abu Dhabi ever, you know. And uh, it, I was really excited about fighting him in the final. And uh, interesting is, like, I'm, I'm in the locker room warming up for that final, and I, I'm smiling, you know, I'm jumping around, I'm smiling. I remember this moment very clearly, and I'm all happy and jumping around, smiling. And uh, I remember Damien coming up to me, he's like, Rob, why are you smiling, bro? You're going to fight the final, man. Like, focus. Like, oh, I'm happy. I was so happy that I was in the final with him. And I do better when I'm happy. You know? and, uh, that day I was really happy. And it's in my mind, I knew I was going to beat him. And, uh, and it's kind of funny because like, the way I pictured the fight going was exactly the way it went. I really I really imagined the fight going that way. And everything that I planned, everything that I wanted to happen, happened. I mean, it was just perfect game plan. Robert talks about some of the professional fighters he trains as well as his outlook on teaching. I trained a lot with Frank Mir for his fight with uh, Nogueira. We, we, we trained like pretty much every day for like six months. You know, I was given, yeah, I was trained with Frank a lot. So, him, uh, I've helped Vitor for his last fight, Matt Lindlin. Uh, I've helped uh, Randy for his fight with Brock. Uh, I've helped so many guys in the Extreme Couture. Pretty much everyone in there, you know, here and there. Um, Martin Kapman, Jay Ron, uh, Mike Whitehead, uh, well, just a lot of names, you know, just a lot of people. And I've been training with pretty much everyone out there, you know, and uh, I help Vondelay now and then, a little Forrest Griffin, a little. You know, just help people I consider my friends, you know, people I like. and. Uh, you know, if, if people have a good attitude and I like them and I, we get along well, and I, I'm very happy to teach them jiu-jitsu if I know, you know, to help them any way I can. A good way of looking at a, a, a good instructor is uh, figuring out how much he likes jiu-jitsu. It comes down to that, you know. It doesn't come down to uh, how many students he has or if he's got a lot of, he's got a nice logo or if, uh, you know, how many stripes he has on his belt, or how many, even how many titles he has. It's, it doesn't come down to that. It comes down to how much he likes jiu-jitsu. And a good way of looking at it, a good way of figuring out if your instructor really likes jiu-jitsu is looking at how, 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 how much does he train. You know, if he likes something, you want to train every day. That's that's something I, I mean, I go crazy if I don't train. I train on Sundays. You know, I go crazy. I get depressed if I don't train. That's how much I love jiu-jitsu. And uh, I see a lot of people out there, man. And this, unfortunately, this is... I would have to say the majority of instructors. Uh, they don't like jiu-jitsu. They, 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 because they don't train. You know, they don't, they don't want it. They're scared. They like the prestige that black belt will give them. They like the prestige of being an instructor. Uh, they like uh, the money, obviously, but they don't like jiu-jitsu. Because if you like jiu-jitsu, you want to train every day. And uh, you know, you can say anything. You can say, oh, there are people that are more accomplished than Robert. You can say there are people that are better teachers. You can say, I don't know, you can say whatever you want, and I, I, don't, but I don't think you can say that there's anyone that likes you just more than I do. Um, Robert, with all of his accomplishments in grappling and teaching, has recently transitioned to mixed martial arts and made a successful debut at a local event called Tough Enough. For more information about Robert and his academy, go to robertdrysdale.net. This video was brought to you by Boston Brawler. Whether you're a fan of the Yanks or the Sox, you can't deny good designs. Check out bostonbrawler.com.